Hey, I'm Nick Athlon Gamer. Welcome back to Football Manager 2020 Zero to Hero Youth Factory FC episode number 22. Mid-season now. It's middle of October. We're about a month from where we left off at the end of the last episode. Though we've only played a couple league games. We're still in the lead, but we have a game in hand. So it's a slender lead, just two points. But no losses, just two draws. We're actually doing quite well. It's just a number of games played, really, that's keeping it close more than anything else. We have had a few matches in the FA Cup. Uh, we did end up having to go to a replay after a draw, but we did push through, and next up in the fourth qualifying round is Felix Stowe. FA Trophy still hasn't started and won't begin until late next month. Of course, the big news at the end of the last episode is that Scott Frank will be leaving us but not until February, so we've got some time before he's going to be gone. Let's get a quick update on the players, how their development is going. Barry Ball now to a 123. Scott Frame hanging around at a 113. Eddie Warren, nice little jump there. He's up to a 110. Uh, Aitken Owen, Gregory now over 100. Uh, Forbes and Jackson over 100. And then Moffitt getting really close, 98. Spence slowly making his way towards 100. Uh, Halford developing quickly. McKinnon is almost there. So a lot of players on the team now starting to surpass that 100 mark or getting very close to it. Then we have that drop-off. Of course, we have our guys that uh, are struggling. But it does look like one of our five players has seen a change in personality. Is it Gibbons? I think it might be Gibbons that has seen he's now fairly professional. So we went from uh, four guys that were unambitious, uh, low self-belief, low determination. There were five of them, and now there are four. So, hey, we're making progress. We're making progress on that front. Uh, but again, these other guys are likely going to see themselves down in the under-23 sides here pretty soon. Speaking of, here's how our development is going there. Chris Cousins playing with the senior squad, uh, but also playing down at the under-23s. But he's had four starts, two appearances off the bench, and he's done pretty well for himself in that time. Is our top guy coming out of the under-23s. Gallagher, Ramich are down there as well with their limited appearances, so I have them playing uh, under-23 soccer and eligible for uh, senior squad. And that's kind of your chief players. I, again, our under-23s lack potential ability a bit. Uh, there just isn't a whole lot there. And personality-wise, you can see a really, really mixed bag. A lot of unambitious players in the under-23 side, and that's the reason why they aren't playing with senior squads. Some of these guys were great cat. Some of the worst guys on the under 23s were from that side. But again, we've cleaned out the the chaff. We've cleaned out the, the guys from the original squad. It's gone completely. So now we're going to be into reshaping this squad. The hope really lies in the under under 18s. Uh, you can see far more potential ability uh, in the upper tier of this group than there is in the under 23 so a lot of guys that can grow develop alan hutton really good example 147 potential ability up to a 76 already uh erdogan is getting really close goalkeeper he's up to an 89 but barry ball ahead of him is kind of a man so we don't want to take that away so that's why we're letting him develop with the under uh 18 it's ryan douglas though really coming along Come along nicely. It's one of our players from this last class, and he's up to an 84 already on 130. So uh, he could find himself in the senior squad quite soon, especially if he's pushing 90, 95. Uh, we'll go ahead and give him a call up. Jordan Daly, not too far behind him. They're both resolute, ambitious, professional, headed in the right direction. Uh, Alan Hutton slowly developing that's why we're keeping him down because he's unambitious uh, smolka big jump here recently now we're 
definitely seeing some good development through most of the squad. But again, there's still quite a few here that don't really belong here. So uh, we'll get there eventually on eliminating those players. But it's going to take a few more classes to get those guys out. I mean, we literally just got rid of the first season guys who were all the zeros. Literally. Well, ones. Let's go ahead and push forward a few weeks, and we'll see what happens. First of November now, FA Cup. We've had some continued success there. We're on to the first round. Team expectation is to reach the third. They want us to win the FA Trophy, which will start later this month. And in the league, our game in hand is used up, and it's actually Matlock who now has one temporarily. But we're up to a 10-point lead, still just the two draws on the season with the season opener and one draw a handful of games later. So we've won nearly or roughly 10 straight in the league. So having some good success there uh, currently. And we keep just plugging away for now. There, there's no reason to slow down. Uh, that Chester match is coming up in about 10 days. Final days of November now, and we're going to take a look at our mentoring groups, make sure that everything is kosher going forward. Uh, and also, over this last season, I did finally get my U23s and U18s up to code on this one as well, especially now that they are playing a bigger role. So our low determination guy is Wilkinson, surrounded by four fairly professional players. So we're hoping to get him boosted, and they have strong influence. Here we have a fairly determined player with a low determination player, hoping to boost him up. We have a few other guys to help with that. And then here we have a fairly ambitious and resolute player with a low self-belief player. So hopefully we can get those three guys uh, boosted at some point. There's not enough players around to add to this. So we, I don't know, Ramage, Cousins, Gibbons with Burton. Ah, I think we could put that together now. Especially now that Gibbons has become fairly professional. Let's go ahead and add in a group. And this will be fourth fix. And we'll put all four of these guys in. And that'll make the entire senior squad. And that allows us to work on all four players that still need help. This group, the whole group, is estimated to be fairly light, so that is challenging, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be okay. Now, for the under-23s, how are they looking? We have mentoring here. Okay, so we have three groups set up here. We have one low determination, one unambitious, another one that is unambitious. What is still out there? There's quite a few players. Uh, there's quite a few good players too, so let's go ahead and start uh, another group. However, let's let's bring in, let's see, Determined and Professional. Let's bring in a second one, Determined, because either of those are fine. And it's low determination that they have. These guys are balanced. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. You can go away now. Okay, balanced. Add you in, and then we have model citizen, fairly determined, and fairly professional. A bit of a mixed bag there, isn't it? Uh, let's go ahead and add in the fairly professional. And then that leaves us with four quality players and some unambitious guys. So you can see exactly how this one is going to work out. So we have the 23s fourth group and we're going to put all four quality players and who do we want from here uh, let's figure out who needs 
who's got the best potential is what it's really going to come down to. So we have Owens, Anderson, and Uzok Chukwu. So Chukwu, and then Owens, and Anderson. There's Owens. There's Anderson. Okay, so Liddington is the next best. The only reason for that is the other guys don't have much hope anyway, so I don't need to necessarily fix their personalities other than to help fix other players. So Liddington is the next guy on the list who uh, needs to get his attitude straight. Down to the other under 18s, we can do the same thing here. I'm not sure we're going to have enough players now to do anything additional. We still have one unambitious. Uh, we do have Jordan Daly is now ambitious. So there you go. Jordan Daly was unambitious. So we've straightened that out this month. He's not fairly ambitious, just somewhat. Uh, but that is that is good. And I think I could actually probably add somebody to that group now who is likewise unambitious that we can give some help to. And again, this is probably going to come down to who needs it. As in, who's got the best potential? Hutton, Dawson. Caught him. Hutton Dawson, and I think it's probably going to end up being Caught him because this is how I worked this before. Hutton. There was Daily. Oh, it is Caught him already. And so it's going to be Dawson, right? All right. So we put him in there, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see the de desired effect. It looks like we've already made it work for daily here just in the last uh, month or so, because when I had checked him at the beginning of the month, I believe he was unambitious. You probably just saw that uh, about six, seven minutes ago. It's been a bit longer for me as we actually dropped below $7 million, but again, we've got a million dollars coming in in February, so... Uh, Overall, our year should still end up being a positive balance. 10-point lead. We've played one game more than Matlock. We have had our third draw of the season now with uh, Farsley. That draw came pretty late, actually. We were down. We were uh, we nearly lost that game. It was in the last 10 minutes. Uh, but also, really disappointing news. First round, Chester beat us 2-1. And we led 1-0 early, but they scored almost immediately to tie the game and then carry that momentum and stole a goal and ended up winning. So we're out of the FA Cup. The good thing about that is it does allow us to focus elsewhere and the board is not ticked off actually that we uh, got knocked out in the first round. So that, that worked out for us. Uh, we should be okay. I only went a short while forward. I been wanting to add to the coaching staff, but not for this reason. Uh, Michael West takes the managerial job at Dagenham and Red Bridge, uh, so he's out, and so we need to replace Michael West and then go ahead and do what it was I was wanting to do uh, for the squad, and that also could mean a GM position if we don't have an a like for like or better replacement. Uh, so here's kind of the rest of the news that I missed. Oh, there we go. I finally finished my coaching license for uh, Continental B that I started right at the end of last season. It took a while. Uh, I'm up to a uh, full two star potential now as well, so that's nice. Or right, two star uh, reputation, not potential. 
Halford, a full 10.0. That's uh, the best we've seen this season. He's been in the high nines all season long, though, improving really well. All right, we did have another draw, but we still are unbeaten for more than 20 games this season. 21, all 21. 55 points, that's a 10-point lead, but Matlock do have that one game in hand, so we have not opened up the uh, the gap over anyone else uh, recently at all. But our under-23s, our U18s, are both playing much, much better this season. The U18s are pretty much mid-table, and the U23s are not bottom of the table. They're not great, but they're not bottom of the table, so both, both squads are... Uh, Both squads are doing better. Jackson and Warren, nice. Both of them making the team of, uh, team of the week. All right, so let's focus on the staff stuff. Let's not get distracted with other things once again. So I need an assistant coach, and I'd like to add an assistant coach at the U18s level. Uh, and maybe the U23s as well, as right now I just have head coaches for the under-23s and the under-18s and nothing else uh, beyond that. So that's a good time to uh, fill two or three positions along the along that front. So let's switch this from a fitness coach to an assistant coach. Let's just drop that. Take somebody who's not already hired. And we'll go from there. Uh, so no, we're not looking at fitness. Uh, but one thing we do need to look at, some of these mental attributes. See, where do we want to start? Determination. Now, my assistant coach is going to need something like this. Gallo. Ooh, hello, Gallo. He's got really good on judging ability. Well, you know what? Actually, no, that does matter. So the ability potential matters when it comes to uh, the GM aspect. And yeah, <laughs> okay, uh, let's let's start with Gallo. That's that's already a given. Now his England that's going to take time to develop, but it's halfway there. And again, he's like a general manager, and without hiring one, that's that's what I want. Can we afford him though? No, I don't want the under 18s assistant job. I want the you to have the assistant job full time. Uh, and let's try to go for two years here. Oof, that is a big drop. How am I still at just 725 on what I can offer? And I've asked the board repeatedly to increase the salaries. Uh, it has changed. I mean, it, it was definitely a lot less than that, but uh, he's going to be ticked off at that yeah he, he wants a lot of money I don't think we're gonna be able to get him but if we do this and we do that that would be for next year Let's start with that and nope the money was way too low, which is really unfortunate because that guy was pretty dang solid. Uh, I do see here some 13s in Calderwood. Definitely not as good. He's got good reputation. Uh, not the right formation though, is he? Thing I'm forgetting to look at here. Calderwood, we might come back to you. 
Uh, let's check here. Uh, Robbie Blake. No, low reputation. Wrong formation. Brewster. Okay. Kind of pro. Gagan Press. Formation's not quite right, but there's a lot to like here. He wants a lot of money, but at least he's looking at the right job here. And let's start with uh, winning the league. Excludes current season. Sorry, buddy. Okay, yeah, he's ticked. And he's not going to take it. Let's go second round. And let's go FA Trophy. And... Contract extension. Nope. So getting down to what we need financially is oh, data. Okay. Let's maybe go by here. Oh, there's Gallo. <laughs> uh, Terry Hart. Joe Gallon, okay. But current ability is not great. We do want somebody who's going to breathe. Oh, there's Calderwood again. Outside of the motivating. It's a bit off. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's take a look at Fenton, who's good in a few areas, and is Gagan Press. He doesn't have a great reputation, but again, it's going to be a long while before that has an impact. Tactical style will help us get the right players coming in. So let's try uh, Dean Fenton, who's actually looking for a pretty small amount. I think we're going to get our guy here. Just the seven-month contract. Oh yeah, there you go. Lower reputation guy, easy hire. All right, uh, Ben Garner looks pretty dang good. Good reputation. That's a pretty solid. Do you want an under twenty threes assistant coach job? Really? That's our limit for the under 23's assistant coach is 400 a week? Okay, he's not far off from that, so with... Oh, bonuses. There you go. Come on now. Oh, you're so close. Ah, you're so close. Come on. Come on. Bonus, bonus. No. I'd love to give you a bonus. It's so sad that I can't give you a bonus. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, he's coming down, but he... J I, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have to lock that in. Ah. Dang, that guy was pretty dang good. All right, well, the under-23s don't impact this much. Let's go into somebody who's going to have, I don't know, high determination. I'm going to throw that in with motivating, discipline. Here's a combination. Shields. Working with youngsters, okay as a coach. Maybe he needs to be the uh, under 18s. We'll try. Try under 18s. Assistant. Okay. Yeah. 
this is going to end up going the same way. Let's just speed this up. It's hard to hire somebody unless they're terrible. Okay, we'll try these two guys maybe. Yeah, he's not a very good coach. He's even worse. Mental and technical. Try McDonald. Oof. Okay, that's not happening. Uh, back to these two, right? Is it lower and then hill? Under 18's assistant coach. Okay, the money's not that far off. But I don't think he's going to come down enough. And we don't have the bonuses that we have for the senior coaches that I can offer. Oh, he's already... Oh, sorry. <laughs> there we go. Okay, he's down to 500. He's down to 475. I'm so sorry that I can't budge. This is not me. I would love to pay you 475. Or 450. You're so close, buddy. So close. But we can't sign him. Our 18th coach, let's flip that to uh, assistant. He wants 550, that's not going to happen. Alright, let's drop it down a tier here. Let's see if we can get somebody else disciplined, motivating. Clint Hill. That's a decent coach. That is somebody we could stick into the under 23s, maybe. He wants too much money, though. There's no way it's going to happen. Lock it. Go. Failed. And, yep, yeah, that, is, that is the nature of the beast, isn't it? Uh, we just can't get someone hired. Oh, there's Calderwood. Boateng. Our 18's assistant coach. Look at that. Hey. You betcha. Okay. Well, there we go. We got our under 18's. That's the one I really wanted. And, uh, yeah. Ford FA Trophy is next on the list. We'll see if uh, these two guys sign before that game. I like the 10 point lead, but it hasn't changed at all. So those teams behind us are really racking up points because we haven't lost. I mean, we, we still have zero losses on the season and just four draws. So 17 wins, four draws is ridiculously good. It's just the teams behind us have been pretty freaking awesome too. And so it's hard to uh, distance them a bit. little youth intake preview of course we're without an assistant manager so this actually could be really negative uh, as it's taken right now because it's Jed Brannon our under 18s head coach who's giving us this preview at the moment there's several defensive midfielders in the next crop 
Uh, we have what looks like a top prospect center midfield. That's really good because that's been a, such a weakness for us. Three forwards that are fine prospects. One good English striker. A terrific group of players coming through and has the potential to be a real cold generation. Nice. Okay, attacking midfielders are hard to find. We haven't any new wing backs. Full backs are not the best. Defensive midfielders looking like they'll aren't looking like they'll trouble the first team. And wide midfielders do not look like great prospects. That part doesn't hurt me a bit. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Gold generation, it's a good side. Uh, I do fear though losing West there for that moment as that came out may have is it I as far as I know, it's supposed to be throughout the year what your managerial side is. If that's the case, then not having a guy for, for a week is not a big deal. Uh, if it's not the case, if if it comes down to just the couple days, if it was preview day plus the, the actual youth intake day, if it's all just generated on those two days, then... We're likely screwed for this year on the number of talent. Of course, the the big factors or among the big factors are the facilities, and, and the facilities certainly have done their thing and will be okay there. But, uh, yeah, not good. Not good. Um, or could be not good. Or we're just fine. Not sure. Now, into our coaching should be tactics yeah and then no staff no that's right it is oh there it is training da 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 I did coach assignments we have a new head uh, assistant coach where are you Dean Fenton Technical attacking is his strength. Uh, mental side of it as well. So can he contribute in more than just one? Mm, not in the right way. So we'll leave him here. Leave you there. Take me off of that. But we are average and heavy and getting some problems and that's one of the main reasons to start kind of taking the load off for some of these guys because we are getting to that point where the squad is quite full okay so quality's there getting there uh, but we're still, yeah, the, this heavy load through here, and average load, and average load. I mean, the fitness is the one area that's solid now. Uh, at least we have that, but... Okay, average. There's light. That's good. Uh... Yeah, it's not as bad. Goes from average to heavy, but we do pick up a half star here. I'll take the half star. And we go to a half, we gain a half star here too. That one still only goes to average, so yeah, we'll do that. Okay, I've got three fitness coaches. When did that happen? Okay, 18s, coaches, coach assignments, and here we go. Uh, Boateng comes in, technical.
Okay. I think that's better than it was. We're heavy on the tactical possession side, though. Can you give us a little boost? Okay, that makes it average in light. It does hurt us here. How much did it hurt? A half star. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's do it. The under-18s, uh, I want to keep down a little bit. Still pretty decent on how we're looking. What are my attributes up to after we finished uh, our latest coaching badge? Attacking, defending, 11 and 12. Technical, technical, mental, all 11s and 12s. Those were all 10s, uh, pretty much, before man management goes up a notch, I think. It was a 13 last time we checked. I think youngster knowledge pushed up a level. I believe it was a 9 before. So some of the mental attributes have got up, but the coaching attributes, we definitely saw a boost. Goalkeeper shot stopping, I went, I think, went from a 5 to a 6. I think fitness went from a 3 to a 4. That working with youngsters, though, really, I need that to go up. I mean, the whole team is youngsters. So how am I going to help these guys develop? Of course, I really, if I'm on vacation, are they training tactical defending at all? That's a good question. All right, well, that's all the time that we have for this episode. We've got to the middle of December. We've got a few months left with Scott Frame, and I think we need to pull out a little bit more of a lead than 10 points by February because we're going to have a bit of a weakness at that left wing position, which was already a bit of a weakness for us. Uh, we still have our four guys down here, but it was five. It was five, so we've made some progress. I think it was Bryn Gibbons, who is now fairly professional, so he is developing uh, his attitude well. Uh, okay, well, there's that part. And what do we have for a left wing? We have anything. We've got uh, Liddington, who's a 65 of 77 and unambitious. Uh, Monkey Black. So none of these guys have the potential. Uh, that's a real weakness for us right now. Uh, we've got McAllister, who's balanced and progressing, and he'll develop a bit, but he's on the wrong wing. Uh, who is Scott Owen is playing right wing, right? Can he play left? No. I don't think I have any solid backups. No, Adrian Williams is our backup right now, and he's a 65, still with low belief. Under 18s. Please tell me who we have a left winger. That is uh, Smolka. Okay, Smolka. And he's up to a 75. So Smolka in February is probably coming up because it's him or Stevenson. And right now it's Smolka who has been developing quite well. Uh, but it'll be a race between Smolka and Stevenson, I think, on the call-up. But looking at the last five games and throughout the season, really, Smolka has an 8.44 rating over the last five and has been proving himself. Uh, he's been the highlighted player in most matches this season, so that is a relief. Uh, that's a definite relief. I'm Catalan Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. I'll see you next time. Be safe out there. Bye for now.